Okay, uh, firstly, I would like to welcome all of you. I thank you for your joining this session. So it is with a great pleasure that I extend a warm welcome to each and every one of you this morning. And uh, to this talk will be given by Prof. Dr. Mazlina Abdel Majid in our FKI monthly seminars on computing and informatics 2024 volume 8 so our title today is crafting your professional identity lessons from a lecturer journey uh, firstly please let me introduce uh, prof maslina uh, prof maslina is the, is a former professor at university of malaysia bahang sultan abdullah uh, with over Two decades of experience in academia, she earned her PhD in computer science from the University of Nottingham, UK. Our Prof. Maslina holds various administrative responsibilities, including serving as a Deputy Dean of Research and Graduate Studies and Head of the Software Engineering Research Group. Uh, currently, she is a Head of the Green Technology Research Lab and head of the data science and simulation research group. Additionally, uh, she is recognized as IEEE senior member and professional technologies by Malaysian Board of Technologies. Uh, Prof. Mazlina obtained a professional certificates from the Malaysian Software Testing Board and is a certified green data center professional. Uh, Prof. Mazlina has made significant contributions to the University of Malaysia Bahanga Sultan Abdullah and is, she is a member of academic program committees and other uh, university. She has an extensive experience in supervision, uh, both in both uh, postgraduate and undergraduate, and she had uh, many uh, PhD students as well. Uh, she founder of she's a founder and editor in chief of the International Journal of Software Engineering and Computer System. Uh, she's a founder as well of the international competition uh, on computing innovations, the Green Technology Research Lab, and her research work uh, focus on green technology operations using simulation modeling, uh, with more than 150 publications and several awards prof mazelina excellence in academics and research is recognized both locally and internationally so uh please uh, let me welcome prof mazelina uh, to share her insights and expertise on crafting your professional identity lessons from a lecturer journey uh, prof mazelina please Okay, uh, Assalamualaikum and good morning to everybody. Uh, can you hear my voice? Yes, yes, Prof. Yes. Oh, okay. yes, thank you. Usually when we use technology, that's the first thing we will ask as either the students or anybody in the, in the, in the room. Yeah, because even though technology is a platform that can uh, make an easier communication, but still, there are so many technical issues can happen. All right. Okay. Um, so thank you so much, uh, Dr. Uh, Ashraf, for the uh, nice introductions about me. And thank you also um, for inviting me yeah, uh, to join this uh, monthly talk uh, uh, organized by the research group. Okay. Um, so I only have one hour uh, because after this, I have another um, programs that I have to attend. So I will start my uh, sharing now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you see my slide? Yes. Yes, bro. Right. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, um, so I'm designing this slide using Canva. Actually, Canva is a very powerful tool that we can do many things using Canva, yeah? And it really made my life easier. <laughs> okay, so um, yes, um, as a start, yeah? Um, so based on the title that I've shared earlier and uh, the one that I'm going to, to, um, to share today is actually based on my own experience, yeah? Uh, as a, a lecturer in um, in one university or almost like now to, um, in this year it will be 23 years yeah so I want everybody to get inspired and also motivated uh, based on my journey as a lecturer at uh, UMPSA okay so um, I'm going to share my experiences that I have obtained uh, during my academic time, yeah, uh, that actually shaped my um, my identity, or I can say like uh, the professional uh, identity uh, that we want uh, to see in a in a professor. Okay, so maybe uh, the term professor here it sounds like too big uh, to some of you because. Uh, probably you uh, you just started as a senior lecturer or you still in the lecturer positions and it will be it will take a long time for you to go for professor so when i say professor uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be the full professor it can be the associate professor yeah okay and um why i'm sharing this is because i i want everybody in the academic position to end your position in the academia at least at the associate professor positions okay all right so this is my story that i would like to tell everybody yeah so how how i start um uh, i um, started my journey as the academician it's actually happened 20 years ago yeah uh, i remember somewhere in november 2000 I, I graduated from UTM uh, Skudai in Bachelor of Computer Science in February 2000. Yeah, then I um, I started my journey as a programmer in one um, industry in uh, Johor that called uh, Iwa, but this um, then Iwa is being taken over by Sony. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm not really prefer to work in industry because I have to wear the same uh, uniform daily. <laughs> um, and also the environment there is not really um, like, I can say uh, friendly or something like it's too um, isolate yeah, from the outside world. Okay, so then I, um, on one day, Okay, uh, as I at the same time, I keep sending my application uh, other than uh, working in the industry. So I send also one of my applications to one uh, university, which is UTM uh, Skudai, and, uh, and also one um, uh, branch of UTM, which is at uh, Pahang. Yeah, so I receive a call from UTM branch Pahang. And um, the, the head of the department asked me um, if I can teach C program, all right? So I actually not so good in programming. Honestly, my programming uh, um, skills or I can say skills is, is maybe, maybe still beginning at that time. Yeah, not, not that maybe or, or towards the, 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 the middle um, um, level. Okay, so I, I, and then I, I was like, uh, when that um, head of a department uh, asked me if you can uh, teach C program, I was like thinking quick, uh, just have a, like a, a quick thought. Okay, sure. My C is, my C is grade is C. How can I teach C? So then without thinking that long, I immediately say yes. Okay, even though I know that I, I, I know that is my weaknesses, okay, then I, I immediately say yes. So that is actually that yes is at the beginning of my journey as uh, an academician or as a lecturer. So I have been hired as a part time tutor uh, in December 2000.
Ebrov. Hi, Prof. No sound now. No sound. Prof. Can you hear me? Prof. I think uh, Prof. Had the technical issue. So some of us say that they can hear. I think no voice now, no sound. Right? Oh, okay, okay. No sound. Uh, sorry for these technical issues. Uh, Prof will, will come back again soon. I think she faced some uh, technical issues from her side.
Okay, uh, sorry for the technical issue. Uh, all right. Um, no, it's okay. Can you see my screen now? Yes, now we can see, we can uh, hear your sound. Okay. All right, good. I'm not too sure you what happened. You can continue, happened. Prof. Okay. Okay, uh, which part that I stopped just now? You mean? Okay, bro. You can continue. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. So. Okay. I I think probably I stopped here uh, just now. Yeah. So. Um. No, you right. stopped before this, bro. Oh, before this, okay, yes, before but this. but this one is more into like a motivation yeah. part, but, but it's okay. Uh, okay. I will okay, you can continue. Part. You can All continue. Right. Okay, yeah. So, um, my uh, main responsibility at uh, uh, UMPSA was um, as the Deputy Dean of Research that has been appointed about six years, yeah, uh, three terms, okay. So this is one uh, story that I would like to share where um, actually it's really a big challenge for me uh, to be the deputy dean um, at the age, I think maybe somewhere 34 years old, yeah, uh, maybe 33 or 34, where that time I just completed my uh, PhD study. And um, I have been informed by my um, my dean, yeah, that, that former dean, uh, Prof Chesney. Uh, she told me that I want to appoint you as the deputy dean. So I say that oh, I I not really know how to be a deputy dean because my publication is not so good. My research work is just started. So everything is just started because you know you are fresh uh, PhD students that just came back um, after a three four years actually, uh, break yeah, from the academic world, okay? So uh, I, I, I took the challenge, yeah? But, this, but that challenge is actually a, a big step that, uh, that I think a, a major contribution to what I have now, yeah? So being that position, being in that position really, um, um, I have to say like, um, I learned a lot, okay, and then be exposed a lot uh, to the postgraduate students, yeah, uh, learning a lot about uh, leadership, le about managing, okay. So that experiences is actually a, a, a good experience, yeah. Even though the work is, I know, is tiring, yeah. Uh, I not really have time because that time my kids are still young, okay. I have to give times to the kids to the family uh, as a as a mother as a wife as well at the same time but um, um a challenge actually really uh, give a good experience yeah okay so um yeah during that time i'm also um involved or um, initiate one one um, journal which is called international journal of computer systems yeah and we are now in the process to get scopus i started this journal in 2014 and i'm also started one competition in ump which is called international competition and this competition is now at the at the volume i can say volume of or at the uh, um yeah we, we organize it for this year will be the fifth time yeah so um this this is some things that i would like everybody um uh, to try you know uh, being a founder being uh, uh taking a, a new step to to go further from what from your comfort zone yeah so you can be a funder, then later on, you can ask other people uh, to continue that work, okay? All right, so um, yeah, uh, among all these informations, this is the part that I would like um, to share um, so that everybody also can get um, uh, motivated or get uh, inspired by my story, yeah? Okay. So um, as I mentioned earlier, yeah, I started my journey as a tutor in 2000. 
Okay, um, at UTM KCP, KCP means that Kuantan Chawang, uh, Campus Chawangan Pahang in English is uh, Kuantan Branch Campus, yeah, <laughs> something like this. Okay, and um, then uh, after that, I become, uh, I uh, became the lecturer of uh, Kutem and later on it's it's rebranding yeah to uh, UMP in the year 2002 okay uh, that time is um, is uh, I've been appointed as a lecturer after I have completed my master study at uh, UM yeah uh, under the master of software engineering and um, and later on, after I have completed my PhD study at University of Nottingham, okay, I in the year 2011, I've been appointed as a senior lecturer. So during this time, I'm also the deputy of the research. Yeah. So um, that uh, that position really give a big impact to me. And with that position, I managed to uh, to graduate. Uh, three master uh, by research students and one PhD students. And with that uh, requirement together with other requirements such as having the uh, national grant, yeah, and also involved in the uh, competitions, not really involved, but managed to gain some award at the international level. I have been uh, appointed as an associate professor in the year 2015. Okay, so the gap is about like um, four years, yeah, uh, from being a senior lecturer to the associate professor. Okay, maybe uh, that time the requirement is not as difficult as uh, nowadays, uh, but still, uh, to be the associate professor, you have to show extra than what you are as a senior lecturer, okay? And uh, move on to, uh, to the post that I have obtained, actually recently, yeah, in the year 2023, I, um, I have been appointed, or we can call it as an um, um, upgrade, yeah, my level to the professorship. Uh, at UMPSA, okay. Why UMPSA is actually a rebranding. Okay, we are rebranding for almost like three times uh, to a new uh, name, which is called University of Malaysia Pahang Al Sultan Abdullah. Yeah. So um, it took about uh, eight years for me to be a, a professor. Maybe for some people. Uh, they managed to achieve it earlier, okay? But for your information, when I refer to the requirement at UMPSA, uh, requirement as a professor, I already started uh, um, my, uh, I can say like apply, yeah? I'm just trying my luck, okay? Uh, four years ago, okay? Uh, meaning that in the 2019, I already started applying uh, as a professor because I already meet the requirement. But during that time, maybe I'm 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 too excited with some um, uh, some people. They will say that okay, never mind. You just try. Um, if you are not getting, then it's okay. If you get, then it's your luck. All right. So I try. Yeah, in the year 2019. Okay, but that time I have fulfilled all the requirement with the uh, by graduating for PhD students having a, a few um, intern, um, uh, external grants, yeah? And then also publication and so on, okay? Uh, but maybe I'm too ambitious, yeah? So um, later on, I learned many things that uh, a professor is not just fulfill the requirement, but you need to have your own uh, identity where uh, when people, Talk about you. They know that you are, uh, you 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 are deserve to be a professor. Yeah, okay. So this process uh, took me about like 22, 23 years journey. Yeah, with a lot of episodes. Yeah, and also a colorful experiences. Okay, I have also downtown uh, down uh, time 
uh, situations where my, during my PhD time, yeah, my uh, son has been uh, diagnosed having a uh, heart problem. Okay, so um, yes, uh, when some uh, when some of my students come to see me uh, saying that they have problem, uh, especially PhD student, yeah, uh, they have problem with that and. This I say I say to them that yeah everybody have different episode of their life but we have to be strong we have to accept it and we have to move on with your with our life okay all right um next all right so let's understand first what is the professor identity yeah or the professor role identity okay. So referring to the chat GPT, thank you chat GPT, I managed to get these definitions, yeah. Uh, it refers to the unique, yeah, uh, that again, unique, yeah, something special, combinations of the rules, values, belief, behaviors that define an individual identity as a professor within academic, right? So you need to have a combinations of this element uh, that will uh, shape you, that will shape your identity as a professor. So how, how to get this element inside you, yeah, or being seen by others, uh, that they see this as your identity. Okay. So I, I would like to uh, guide you, yeah, uh, based on my humble experience. I don't say that I'm good. Uh, but based on the 23 years experience as academicians, um, I feel that um, whatever I have, I should share. Yeah, so that other people can perform better than me. Maybe, um, uh, maybe you will manage to gain the uh, associate professor or professor um, less than the time that I managed to get my to, uh, to get my positions. Okay. All right, so as you know that um, we, a lecturer or an academicians, we have 100 works to do daily, yeah? Many, many things that you have to uh, manage, yeah? Instead of only doing teaching, but we, you also have to do many other works that related to the admin work, related to the KPI, related to the uh, sudden request, where you have to fill in a form, where you have to um, give information. I hate when a time <laughs> when I'm in the middle of doing something and then there's a, suddenly a message come in that a prof or doctor, you have to give information about, um, about that, uh, um, uh, the expert recognitions that you have done before this. This is uh, for the university record. So there are many things that will come to you daily. Yeah. So, um, I know it's it's not an easy tough uh, task, yeah, uh, as the academicians. Uh, but here, what I have listed is actually the uh, the main point or the main task that you have to uh, focus, yeah, uh, in order for you to um, to upgrade yourself to the next level. All right. So I will start with teaching, yeah. Okay. Um, for me, I'm I'm just a normal uh, lecturer. I'm not really an extraordinary uh, lecturer. Yeah. So I do whatever I have to do as a lecturer in the daily uh, routine. Okay. But uh, but I I uh, prefer to sometimes to challenge myself. Even even though I don't have time, but um, but if you try to manage, you 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 will have that time yeah you will have a work to call you will have the work that has been assigned to you or or the work that you are uh, planning will be uh, completed at the end of the day all right so uh, first of all um, try to teach all level of academics yeah so you can start by uh, giving some workshop or or, or or maybe if there's some um, programs related to the certificates yeah so try to uh, to be part in that program as a as a lecturers yeah or as the as the facilitators okay 
and also for the diploma, bachelor, master and PhD. So maybe some of you are, are, are wondering why PhD? Yeah. So in PhD, I know that we don't have to teach anything, but sometimes at uh, IPS or Institute Postgraduate Study, they will have various workshops for the PhD students. All right. So I'm also a part of um, a part of the uh, instructor for the uh, for that IPS uh, at UMP. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. And next, I will go for the uh, teaching approach. Yeah. So, for me, my uh, my style is like when I talk with my student or in a class. Yeah. Um, I will start with a with a short motivations to them. I usually, I would like to share my stories during my undergraduate study, during my master study, or during my PhD study, so that they will get uh, motivated or being um, excited uh, to hear more about my stories um, in, um, in other classes, yeah? So uh, this way, um, because to teach a student sometimes it's difficult to get their attention. I know they, they will only give you, at, um, they will only pay the attentions about maybe uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and then you start seeing that they are drawing some cartoons. Uh, they are start to play the handphones, okay? Even though they are opening their laptop, they are doing other things, right? So try to engage with the students about your, uh, your stories, yeah? If you doesn't want to share your own story, you can share other stories, all right? And um, and in between uh, the class sessions, try to give some uh, jokes or, or showing that you are care. And at the same time, um, for your research, uh, for, I'm sorry, for your research, for your teaching materials, uh, you have to upgrade your teaching materials. Yeah, I know that at the moment you not really have that leisurely time to prepare a good teaching materials because of there are so many works to do uh, daily. Uh, but um, at least, yeah, um, you, you have to show some, some things that relates to the uh, videos. Um, you can also use, um, uh, yeah, you can also use YouTube, all right, uh, to show that uh, or to give an extra idea of what you are teaching to them, yeah. This is important for, for a better knowledge and also for a better absorption of the, uh, of the learning, yeah? All right, next point is about uh, stay updated, all right? Uh, so we know that we have a new technology called ChatGPT where everybody are, uh, are start using this uh, technology. This is actually a good, yeah, but at the same time, um, like me, myself, I'm uh, starting this year, I, I excited to use Canva because Canva uh, helped me a lot in um, designing the flyers for the, uh, the, the competitions, yeah, uh, designing uh, flyers for any talks, all right. So many things we can do with Canva, yeah, including uh, this slide presentation also is being prepared by Canva. So if you are up to date uh, with the technologies of platform, and at the same time, you go for online courses and also do more reading. So when people talk with you about something, yeah, now we know that AI is the, is the highlight um, points or highlight topic nowadays. So at least you can show that you you have that uh that knowledge yeah so then people will know that okay you you have that uh, identity as a knowledgeable or knowledgeable uh, knowledgeable people okay so this is uh something that is is also important to shape your identity okay next um yeah um something to do about online resources i know that we started to uh, be more in trend with online resources after COVID-19, yeah? So uh, that, uh, the impact of COVID-19 is actually a good impact to, uh, to, the, um, to the academic world, right? So in that, uh, with that impact, we have, uh, we are being open, yeah? We are being allowed, okay, to you, to use online resources more aggressively compared to before, all right? 
I know that in the MQA, no, sorry, uh, yeah, MQA um, uh, rules that we can do about 60 40, all right, 60 40 face to face, 40% that you can uh, can deal online or give like, like uh, asynchronized learning with your students. So use that 40% uh, to let them learn by themselves based on the videos that you have prepared. Yeah, or, or you can also go for the uh, global classroom or MOOC. Yeah, uh, myself, I involved in MOOC. I um, um, developing a few uh, uh, online videos that relates to my course, which is system analysis and design. So when I have to go for conferences, uh, meeting, uh, doing research work, and so on, I already prepared the online resources for them to uh, to study and using videos yeah and having your face inside the videos really uh, give a big impact uh, to the student instead of just uh, your voice or just text yeah because they feel that they are uh, more closer to you when they are seeing you uh, in the video. This is the, uh, some of the feedback that I received from the students, right? So then I share to you. Okay, uh, next is about the um, maintaining the good feedback. Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, uh, based on the engagement of the with your students that uh, through the stories that you share, uh, through the, um, I mean, uh, the online resources that you prepared, yeah. So you have to remain the good um, feedback with the students. As you know, that we have that um, lecturer feedbacks from the student. I don't know where, what they call it in UMS, but in UMP, we call it as EPET. EPET, which is about the uh, uh, academic performance assessment. Yeah. So the student have to evaluate to, to evaluate uh, every lecture uh, at the beginning of the semester and also at the end of the semester. So this EPET is actually uh, uh, and uh, is actually important for your um, um, uh, for for the evaluation process at the faculty level. Yeah. Um, because they want to see that how good you are as a teacher or as a lecturer, yeah, uh, with your students, yeah. So try to be responsive with your student. Um, you may use uh, WhatsApp, Telegram, or face to face. Some I know that some uh, lecturers, uh, if they receive a message from students, they will ignore it. They will just like not really reply to it. Uh, yeah, it's true. Uh, I, I don't say that you, you cannot do that, uh, that you should have your own limit, but maybe you can limit it uh, until from nine to five. Yeah, if you have time, you reply. If not, you can just create a, a group uh, for your sessions and any message of, uh, from your student, you can message in the group that, okay, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit, uh, I'm, I'm little bit busy. So anybody who want to have an urgent um, urgent need to see me, you can see me at this time. So allocate the time for them. All right. Uh, you can use, if you want, doesn't want to see face to face, you can also uh, communicate with them through the social media. Okay. Um, so that's about teaching. Yeah. I know it's just a common process that you are uh, facing daily. Um, as I say that teaching is a, 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 is not really an extraordinary, I'm not an extraordinary teacher or lecturer, yeah. But what I would like to share, uh, uh, which I've, uh, I know that to upgrade yourself to an uh, associate professor or professor, research is, is playing a main role, yeah. So especially, first of all, it's about H index, all right. So you as a lecturer, yeah, you need to concern about the H index and you also need to learn how to increase the H index. Okay. Um, some people, they are not really bothered about H index. And then uh, you can see that sometimes in your, um, in your Scopus profile, yeah, 
you have to check daily because uh, sometimes uh, uh, the scopus is not that intelligent to detect your own um, name, yeah? Because the name can be like, for example, my name, Mazli, Majid Mazlina A. That's the name that I register uh, with Scopus. But sometimes they will um, read it as uh, Abdul Majid Mazlina. Or it can be Maz, uh, it can be Mazlina in front Abdul Majid at the end. So you have to regularly check your Scopus ID. Uh, and if you found that you have multiple ID, you have to merge it. Okay. Uh, so... After you merge, then you can see that the number of citation, document, and hitch in that is uh, um, is is uh, calculating uh, in the correct way. Okay, all right. Um, so maybe you are wondering how can I increase my hitch index? All right. So there are many uh, many process. Yeah, the common process that people will ask will say to you is that okay, you have to be active. Uh, in the research gate, you have to be active in the uh, LinkedIn and so on, right? Um, it's true, but that takes time, yeah? Um, so, what the, the best way what you can do is that you have to know um, the, the people that's that around you, yeah? You, you have to know that who are doing the same research with you from, uh, from other universities from other research group at other university. So in, you can communicate with them and then you can say that I have a new uh, research work uh, that I would like to share with everybody. Yeah. So this is the fastest way that you can also increase your research index. All right. Okay. Next is about publications. All right. Um, uh, I'm sorry, about the H index just now, I forgot to mention that uh, uh, in a normal situation for associate professor uh, university, in my university, I'm not too sure in UMS, they will see at the minimum of requirement associate professor is his index uh, 10, yeah, 10 to 12 maybe in this range. And for the uh, professor, it will be 15 and above. Yeah? depending on your performance okay uh, there are situations also those who are below than uh, 10 yeah uh, can also obtain the associate professor position uh, but it depends uh, also in uh, maybe that person uh, have a significant impact on other contributions yeah maybe on the research grant have a very um, have uh, a good relationship with industry have generated a lot of income to university okay so there are various um, requirement that uh, that university will check okay all right so um, next point is about the uh, publications and citations yeah okay this is also the most important in uh, 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 I can say element yeah that will um, contributes to the to your uh, to the pro the positions that you aim for. Okay, so you have to consistently publish and be cited. This is the most important part. Then this is something that I learned also during uh, my previous uh, uh, applications. Yeah, uh, I have applied uh, for the professorship about like uh, three times. Yeah. So I have received two times rejections, okay? And I learn from the mistake and from the witnesses that I have, okay? So um, here, there is one situation you can see that my, uh, my um, publication is not that uh, many, yeah? So uh, this is actually uh, something that you need to avoid, all right? For me, it happened because there is some reason where we have the COVID-19 situations yeah, in the year 2020, 2021, all right? Okay, um, but try to remain that, let's say, in every year you have to, you, you can publish 
five papers. So remain in that level of four or five. At least you publish. Yeah. Don't um uh do not um uh think that publication is not important in this year. I will publish more in next year. You do you you cannot have that uh that thought. Yeah. So you have to publish consistently and also be cited. So yeah. So citation is also an important element that uh in the in the requirement all right so um and one thing that in order to make you publish uh, consistently so you can uh, i will suggest you to publish in all types of publication okay it's not necessary you have to go to uh um uh, to the wos to the scopus yeah uh, journals you can go for scopus proceeding yeah scopus conferences so so this will help you to increase the number of publications that you publish uh, in a year all right and uh, one thing that i would like to add also is about the um, uh, books yeah uh, i know that this is not really um, uh, and uh, some things that people prefer yeah, but for me, I try. I try to publish two books. Yeah, which me as the uh, the writer and also the uh, the author of the book. Yeah, I have one book on the research overview. Uh, it's being used uh, at UMP uh, for the uh, PhD students. Yeah, and also during the COVID nineteen um, uh, time, I uh, managed also to uh, publish one uh, book chapter. Yeah. Uh, with my postgraduate students, yeah, that relates to that uh, current trend of um, topic. Okay, so next I will go for the research grant, yeah. So for the research grants, um, it's good for you not to only um, rely on the uh, university grants, yeah. You have to try uh, for other grants that is available like matching grant industry grant yeah national grant frgs and also international grants i know these types of grant is difficult to um uh, to be granted okay but at least you try you put effort and then uh, you learn from those who are already success in applying uh, that grants yeah uh, myself, I'm the panel for the my grants, and I give tips and tricks to win FRGS. So every time I apply FRGS, I manage to get uh, F, uh, to get FRGS with the allocations to buy equipment. Because some people say, "Hey, we cannot buy laptop, we cannot buy workstation," but I manage to get it. So there are tips and tricks in writing a good proposal of FRGS. Okay. So, and also you have to be a leader and a member. If you cannot be a leader, at least one, uh, one or two grants, you need to be a leader and the rest you can be a member. Okay, I have to be, uh, speak up a little bit <laughs> on my uh, <clears throat> sharing. Okay, uh, so next is about domain, yeah. Um, as uh, lecturers, you, you need to be in one, uh, I, uh, in one domain um, at one time, all right? Um, and you can use various uh, various uh, method actually, yeah? But the, the main part is you have to refer to the method that you are uh, profess in, okay? So um, first of all, you have to make visible of your research expertise, yeah? The method, the domain that you are choosing okay through the talks okay right as a, um, maybe during the invited talk during the conference talk during the keynote talk yeah so you talk about your research domain and research method okay in the grant applications for your pg research title for the research award all this needs to be consistent right uh, uh, there are situations where uh, lecturers are doing various uh, various uh, domain and various methods yeah so in this in in that type of lectures sometimes um, it's difficult to be evaluated because uh, a professor or associate professor needs to be someone that profess in one in one method or in um, in one domain yeah okay uh, but when i say in one actually you can combine 
Yeah, so um, the combination is required for a better result. Yeah, for a better uh, better performance. Okay, so um, there is no wrong to combine or to know other method, but at least your main method that you are expert with, you have to highlight it in every of, or you have to visible it in your research work. Okay, so for me, I'm in simulations uh, and I'm solving the operational management uh, for a various um, uh, topic. Okay, I start in the year 2011 after I graduated my PhD uh, study uh, with human behavior. Okay. I in, in uh, solving a, a problems or operational problem related to the human behavior. But then later on, I found that it's very difficult for me to proceed with this title. So I choose about education technology and also go for some healthcare work. But then I, I found that um, it's also sometimes difficult to get data, yeah, to do the validation process. So starting in 2022 and 2020, 2020, yeah, I I um, I choose one um, topic which is um, in trend topic, yeah. Uh, under green sustainability. So this is my current domain. And I um, and um, and the three pillars under sustainability is something that uh, helped me uh, uh, to um, to formulate various uh, research title, yeah, for my PG research uh, title or for my grant applications. Okay, so I myself I involved, yeah. Uh, and I change I uh, because you know change will sometimes give a better uh, better situations or better result for us right but one thing that I would like everybody to remind is that um, uh, if you see in the in the uh, in the scopus uh, profile yeah you will notice that uh, there are some keywords or some we can call it some uh, category that has been um, uh, has been categorized uh, by the scopus based on your publications. So this is actually important because in from here, when you say that you are good in green computing or green sustainability, uh, the examiner will check. Yeah, is it true that what you are claiming about? All right. So if all your publication relates to what you are claim. So uh, uh, then, then it's true. This is you, yeah. Because some people say that I'm doing research on uh, on uh, IoT uh, domain, uh, so using um, uh, deep learning method and so on. But your publications not showing that. Okay. So you. That's why I say that be consistent and make yourself visible based on your research work. Okay, so this is the current domain that I'm involving into uh, based on the green sustainability. I have um, designed my own uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, elements of uh, or topics that I can uh, that I use later on to get uh, to guide my students. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so for to do research, we need postgraduate students. Yeah. Nowadays, I know that we are also use undergraduate students uh, to perform some of the research work, or sometimes uh, you use a small part of your research uh, work uh, for the undergraduate final year project work. That that is fine, yeah. But postgraduate students are someone that uh, will help us um, in, uh, especially in the publications, yeah, in the research grants because. Um, uh, based on our research grant, they are our research assistant. If they perform, our research grant will also perform. And we can close that grant and apply another grant. So you need to have a good bonding with your PG students and and they let them see you as their role models. Yeah, I have one uh, PhD student here. All these already graduated. So this is all my previous PhD student. This is my postdoc. And uh, Dr. Akma, the middle one here, is now a lecturer at uh, UMP 
Yeah, and she's also oh she always telling me. In fact, this morning she messaged me that um, uh, saying that Happy Teachers Day, and she always see me as her role model. And when I see her performance, he she is actually like um, duplicate, not duplicate. Yeah, can we say duplicating or copying what I have done? But this is good. Yeah, this is good for her own benefit. All right. Okay, uh, next is about um, leadership, right? So try to grab any opportunity uh, for the top management positions, yeah? Um, maybe uh, not everybody will have this chance, but at least you will have a chance as a coordinator, as a head or something. Or, uh, this is important, yeah? Don't, um, don't afraid to, uh, to accept this, uh, the positions that, that come to you. Okay, because uh, by being at the top position, you will be aware uh, about the focus and the issues within the university and nationally. Yeah, sometimes there are so many issues, so many, um, we can call it, uh, why you, yeah, or oh, there's so many uh, input from the university or from the capital that will come to you first. All right, if you are the dean of your deputy deans or the head of the programs or the coordinators. Okay, so you, you need to be aware, yeah, so that when people talk with you, you are not in the situations that um, uh, not having that uh, that knowledge or in a situation that you cannot uh, talk about it or you cannot answer about it, right? You doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, you have to not, doesn't need to be uh, too good but at least you are aware of the situations, okay? So join leadership training uh, at the universities, agencies, and so on, if possible. It's not necessary. Myself also, I'm not joining any training. I only at the university level, maybe. Um, and uh, you also have to challenge yourself to lead any event or any programs, yeah? This is me when I... Uh, uh, in the year 2015, I share the our fourth international conference, yeah, and also this is the conference. Uh, this is the international competition that I mentioned. Uh, I'm the founder. I start it in the 2016. Okay, and it's important uh, for you uh, to to lead a program or to involve in the program. It's not necessary to lead to involve. Uh, especially when a program is related to the uh, to a program that outside from your own uh, place, uh, for you to be known, yeah, to get uh, more collaborations and open up uh, with more opportunities. Okay, so the value that I would like to highlight here is about the uh, because being a leader, okay, or being uh, being yeah, I can say being a leader, yeah, it will help you to polish to be a good leader. Right, so this is happened to me when I was a deputy dean for the six years. Okay, and at the same time, it helped your maturity and resilience. Uh, to be associate professor or professor, you have to have that maturity and resilience. This is important. Okay, uh, that's why if you can see that um, some um, those who are in the position of associate professor and professor, professor especially, it needs someone that uh, mature enough. Yeah, because we need them to give decision. We need them to 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 decide uh, to their opinions and so on. So the opinions, the decisions needs to be in the situations that um, uh, in the mature situation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and you will gain more respect and trust, and also at the same time, you will establish a strong PR. Okay, so automatically, well, you will have these um, skills, yeah, when you um, frequently involve with many people uh, outside from your own uh, university. Okay, so this one, I will just quickly go in brief. Um, this also important uh, for you to shape your own identity because you have to shape it according to your research and also according to the um, uh, to the knowledge, yeah, to the knowledge uh, related to the academic, related to the evaluations, all right? For me, uh, I started my journey as a keynote speaker when I uh, has been invited by one university in India, okay? 
and uh, I didn't know that I have to give a keynote speaker in front of uh, 300 um, participants. Okay, I um, I'm quite like short and afraid because it's a first time for me and that time in the year 2000 I think 2015 or 16 yeah I uh, um, but that is actually the first step uh, I mean from that first step I, I feel that oh okay it's not that difficult to be the keynote speaker uh, of course everybody will have that situation of nervous uh, the situations of um, uh, should I prepare my speech correctly? Maybe my speech is not that good. All right. So you will have all these questions inside your mind, but it, it, it will resolve, you know, uh, during the time uh, when you start um, speak. Okay. All right. And um, yeah, until today, I have uh, given yeah 27 talks around uh, the world. <laughs> all right. Okay, and um, it's also important for you to be the program auditor. But for me, I'm I'm not really prefer to be a prog program auditor. I prefer to be program advisor. Auditor really um, uh, take times to. I mean, uh, uh, for me, I need to to give a lot of times uh, to uh, audit the program. Yeah, to do the uh, to do the reporting because I don't really like to do that. Uh, audit uh, report um, but at least once a while you have to evolve uh, as a program auditor and now uh, at the capital at the mqa level they have one excel uh, uh, one tools they are using excel so it, it's really uh, something useful and um, help to save the time in the process of doing reporting uh, all right so um, yeah and one more point that I would like to highlight, the rest is something that you have to try to be involved. Yeah, uh, but here is about referrals or being mentor or consultant. So this is important. Okay, so we have to be someone that is different from the status of senior lecturers. Mentors, consultant, referral is, uh, is, a, is a position that, um, that, uh, that shows the level of your knowledge and shows that the, le the level of your uh, expertise. Yeah, so you you have to um, to try yeah uh, yourself to be a mentor or involved as a consultant, and through that, when people see you, yeah, they will appoint you as a referral or as a as a as the consultants. Okay, all right. Um, I will quickly skip the rest. Okay. So for the awards, yeah. Um, the awards usually will come from your uh, research work and also maybe from your performance and probably from your publications and as well as probably from your um, uh, membership. Okay. So I show to you, I have various awards. Yeah, this doesn't mean that I want to show off. No, it's just to show that uh, you need to uh, grab as many awards as possible. Yeah, you have to make your CV. Uh, <laughs> my friend always tell me that in a joke works. Yeah, okay, you, uh, you have to make your CV fat. Okay, I like to, uh, she always say that, okay, saya suka gemukkan CV saya. All right, meaning that she she want her uh, to have a lot of thing in the CV, yeah. So I would suggest like um, myself, I start uh, in the journey of uh, competitions, yeah, um, where I start that journey in the back in the year 2000, um, 2012 maybe, yeah. Um, where I, I went to one competition in uh, UUM. Yeah, I think that competition is still available until today, which is called AIRIA. Okay, even though it's not being, um, uh, being recognized by the calculations of Myra, okay, but it's still okay, 
right? Because everything that you have involved, it will give you an experience. It will make your work better. You can improve it and go to another competitions. All right. So I, I joined two various competitions before this and now I'm I'm not longer involved in competitions but I I I I I'm mentoring yeah mentoring my students recently they received the special award they received that um yeah special award gold medals uh, based from my mentoring work okay so um uh for this just uh try yeah try and even though uh, the university will not cover, you can use, uh, you can go for a conference that is uh, for the competitions that is maybe not that expensive. Yeah. And um, you can uh, go for it or you can apply for it. Okay. Next is. Uh, okay. Consultations. Yeah. Uh, consultations, um, it's not everybody prefer to go for consultations, but at least you can start to try to go for unpaid consultation. Myself, I start with, um, uh, by being like an advisor, uh, to one school project. Yeah. So from that, um, advisory work, I, um, I managed to be like, um, gain my confidence level in uh, in mentoring or give advice. So from that uh, experience, uh, I start my um, my consultation work uh, as a paid consultant, yeah, which is registered under university. We have one um, uh, one upper one. Um, what do you call it? Uh, uh, it's like uh, anak syarikat, yeah, uh, the unity spin of company that involved in the consultations, okay. So uh, UMP technology, yeah. So I registered at UMP technology as a paid consultant and start my journey as a software project manager. Uh, as in uh, teaching, yeah, I, uh, I, I like to, uh, I mean, my mastering, uh, my expertise in the software development work. Okay, so I know that nowadays there are too many software development work outside there. So um, I uh, improve myself to be like a project manager. Yeah, I join a few courses. So from there, I uh, manage to obtain the trust from a few companies to be their project manager. So I'm uh, a, cons uh, a registered consultant yeah, or registered project manager at the uh, for to solve some uh, industry project okay <clears throat> all right so another points that always been highlighted in the university kpi is about com uh, community services i um for me i involved in um various community services yeah i start by uh, involving with the student itself, all right? I organize one programs, and that program I try to obtain a fund from the university, and um, and um, and I manage to do that, and also organize it for the benefit of the uh, students and also for the university. Yeah. And another points that. Um, uh, if possible, yeah, to be active member as uh, for any ego, uh, NGO or associations. Okay, so this uh, will also help you to be uh, visible among the society. Okay, and another one that I make uh, I, because sometimes uh, I like to create a program. Yeah, so this one uh, I. I did with my family. I, I bake brownies and I sent to all the uh, anak yatim houses uh, during the COVID time previously. So this is also a part of community services that you can register with your uh, university. All right, <clears throat> I will quickly um, go uh, to end up the sharing. Um, 
visibility is important as you can see that uh, people like to post their achievement so this is important yeah so post the impactful achievement not everything that you post in the social media just the impactful achievement uh, and um, this will give you visible to the society to the people outside there that uh, they see your uh, identity yeah and you have to attend established conferences. Yeah, established meaning that not um, not um, every conferences that you can attend. Nowadays we have that uh, hybrid. So some conferences you can attend it online, but those uh, uh, conferences that really gather many um, um, significant significant people. Yeah, uh, then uh, you have to choose that conference and go. Okay. Um, so you have to be also have to try to be a speaker, panel or trainer. Yeah, don't worry too much about the, the, your speech structure. Don't worry too much about your English or about your um, about your content. Yeah, this is normal. Everybody will have that uh, weaknesses and limitations. But you have. Um, but if you accept this challenge, yeah, it shows that you are confident with yourself. <clears throat> Okay, so and then at the same time, when there are any meetings or programs, uh, try to offer ideas and opinions, right? Okay, um, all the works that you have done is actually for a contribution to the faculty, to the university, state, national and international. So all this contribution is really important in, in seeing your identity, in, in, in shaping you to be a professor or associate professor. Because uh, uh, if you are applying at one university, uh, I mean, yeah, for example, at your current university, you, they will see what's your contribution to the to the university itself. First of all, they will see at the university, are you helping in uh, in um, in uh, formulating a programs? Are you helping in um, in uh, the collaborations, the MOU, and so on? Yeah. So they want to see the contributions that you have given to the university as well as to the state, national and international. <clears throat> okay. All right. So challenges and growth is always, uh, challenges is always there, but you have to grow. Yeah. So I receive rejections, uh, but keep trying and applying. And from there, you understand the weakness points that you have and uh, improve it. Okay. So... When you look at the requirement of applying uh, for the positions, if they ask you for two PhD students, you have to give more than that. Yeah. Or if they say that we want 10 journals, so try to give more than that. So if you give more, there will be like less reason for people to reject you because you are um, you are showing a better um uh, better performance than the one that is uh, required, okay? And one thing for sure that you have to be confident with your own talent, all right? Believe yourself, trust yourself that you have that knowledge, okay? So building the professor identity is, yeah, required time and effort, okay? So you have to planning at early stage at every year. This is what I do every year. At the beginning of the years, I will do a planning uh, where uh, what publications, what publications, okay, um, uh, what research grants, who's going to collaborate with me. So all this needs to be planned at every year, if possible. Okay, I know it will change, but at least you have a first plan. All right, and. Embrace the challenges and opportunities. Take the challenge, uh, get the opportunities. Yeah, be patient. This is important. I know it's difficult, but be patient, be loyal, and going with the flow. Hear me at UMPSA. I'm already two decades. Yeah, meaning that twenty years plus. All right. So, I don't say that you have to be at one university the whole uh, i mean as what i did yeah but uh, uh to to get more uh, recognitions to, uh, to to let people see your contributions this is also important 
Right. So for me, the significance of being a professorship is I want to get a better pension if, uh, during my retirement day. Okay. Uh, I also want my acknowledgements of expertise and contributions to academia over the year being recognized. Yeah, being acknowledged by the university because I have uh, uh, contributes to the university for two decades. Of course, I need some recognitions. Okay. And um, I also want to get trust or obtain trust in man man mentoring the students and staff. Yeah. And at the same time, uh, when you are a professor, you will see that people are, are hearing you more, yeah, listening to you more. Okay. Your voice is more acceptable and respectful, right? And, um, and another uh, thing that I would like to do, uh, maybe not in the near time, that, but I already started it. I like to be uh, uh, I like to be a consultant. Like I like to 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 give uh, to consult people. Yeah. Some sometimes the lecturer having problem in this and that. They uh, especially in the work uh, in the uh, uh, mostly about work. Yeah. About work, they will come and say that I have problem to increase my H in that. So I give uh, my own consultation to them. Yeah, and then some PhD student they have difficulty to design the problem statement. I tell them what to do. So I like to to be in the situation to as a consultant. Yeah, I I give that uh, consultations um, uh, based on my own experience and also knowledge. Right, and last but not least, uh, I would like to give back to the society through the. Um, uh, expertise that I have, yeah, or through the innovations that I have, all right? Yeah, when I say innovations, um, I know that um, uh, sometimes it's difficult for you to create a product, okay? Uh, but at least you can try. For me, I have like six copyrights uh, for my own product. Uh, but as a lecturer, we are so busy, we are not a business people. So from that six, that's only one or two maybe has been used in the society. Okay, uh, so you have to be, uh, even though there are so many works that you have to do, yeah? So you have to stay happy, stay healthy, all right? I, um, and please do a, ready, ready, a regular checkup in your own uh, self, yeah? For me, um, I have some uh, sickness as, uh, already, okay? Uh, so then I have to um, be focused more on my health. Uh, at the same time, uh, I'm also a baker. You can see that I have uh, baked a lot of various cakes, yeah? This is actually during my part-time uh, where if I feel that I doesn't want to think about work, I will bake, okay? And which this is not, for, I mean, this part, this is actually a business where I, I uh, sell it to my, uh, to, to, to various customers. Okay. So taking leave holidays is important. Yeah. So you have to stay um, healthy so that you can work better. You have to stay happy so that you can have uh, a better, um, I mean, a, a fresh mind. Yeah. Uh, to, to, to do your work. Right, so here I put a summary of my achievement in one slide before I apply for my professorship. Okay, uh, so this is good because the examiner, they really, um, like when they go through the documentation, there are so many things inside there. And the documentation not really, uh, it's not really highlighting uh, the impact or, or the significance of your work. Okay. So putting all that impactful work in one uh, page like this will really highlight your value or your identity. All right, so that's all from me. Yeah, I'm sorry for taking uh, a long time, um, but, uh, that, but um, I hope that my sharing will give a beneficial input to everybody and motivate everybody um, uh, to apply for the positions that you can be the best before your retirement day, yeah? So it's not necessarily have to be associate professor, professor, but those who are from lecturer, you can upgrade to senior lecturer and senior lecturers to associate professor and so on, all right? So this is me. Uh, if you would like to uh, WhatsApp me to ask anything, you are free to do, uh, to do so, yeah? 
at my uh, phone number and also my email there mazlina at umpsa.edu.my all right so thank you so much uh, everybody yeah uh, and there is one last quote uh, by uh, chat gpt <laughs> Keep pursuing your dream of becoming a professor. Yeah, your knowledge and passion will lead you there. So never give up. Right? Okay, for that, thank you so much. Thank you, Prof. Mazalina uh, Abdel Majid for this uh, very informative talk. So now uh, I will give a chance for question and answer. Please ask if you have question. Either you can just uh, ask your question directly to Prof or you can send in the uh, inbox. Please come. If you have any question, you are welcome. Any question, please? Any question, please? It's okay, uh, doctor. If you do, they don't have, they can uh, WhatsApp me or email me any questions that they are uh, they want oh, to okay. ask. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, uh, you know, your, your talk is wonderful and it is very clear. We get a lot of uh, experience. Uh, so I, no one have question. Everything. It's like clear. Okay, okay. so <laughs> thank you, Prof. Uh, in, in, in conclusion, so I would like to extend my sense of gratitude to Prof. Dr. Mazalina Abdel Majid. And on behalf of the FKI UMS uh, Dean of Faculty, Deputy Deans, and all of our staff uh, for this uh, insightful and attractive presentation. Thank you, Prof, and for your time. And I would like also to thank each one of my colleagues here for your uh, active participation and contribution today. So please, before we leave, uh, you may uh, open your camera to take our uh, photo session as usual, please. Camera, please. Okay. Ready. One, two. Wait, 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 Diana. We have okay, wait for okay. others. Maybe they are preparing. <laughs> All right. Sorry. I can see uh, many of the attendees are not joining to open camera yet. Please open your camera. Okay, ready, yeah? Ready, yes. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. Meta. Okay, once more. Freestyle. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Assalamualaikum. Wa alaikum assalam.